Our product is a high-end CAD product, computer-aided design software, uh, used by uh, engineers to design whatever they like to design. People use SOLIDWORKS to uh, prototype ideas to begin with, potentially. They use it to um, take maybe detailed um, you know, drawings that were you know, sketched up by draftsmen and actually build a, a 3D model that they can visualize in, in three dimensions and um, eventually um, either a hybrid of those 3D models or, um, or, the, or a detailed drawing that got converted from paper to, to, uh, to digital uh, ends up on a shop floor for, for the manufacturers to actually build the, build the parts, whatever they happen to be. I think most users are using the SOLIDWORKS to, to design their final product, and they're, they're beyond the concept stage. Um, so they're, they're, they're at a point where they're, they, they know what they want to design. Um, they probably have some rough ideas on where they're beginning to design, and they're actually uh, building the final product in the CAD in our software. So uh, graphics hardware really fits in under the realm of the fact that you've got a lot of data to display to the user as they build their designs. I mean, some people are building very large, complex models, and um, well, even sometimes simple models. There can be a lot of detail, a lot of um, a lot of information that needs to be presented to them. And um, well, the hardware, the graphics hardware, is uh, you know makes that possible. And we try to leverage certain aspects of graphics hardware to make it um, you know, make it more performant, uh, make it more reliable, um, make it prettier. Yeah, I think it has helped our customers. They certainly have been able to design bigger things now. Uh, you know, essentially their, their limit is sometimes just the amount of data that they can throw at the system. And with, uh, with some of the improvements that we've done in graphics, they, they can go beyond those previous limits. So they can do bigger, better things now. Besides being able to uh, make things bigger, um, we've enabled them to make things look prettier, look more realistic in real time. So um, these are things that certainly uh, make their lives uh, more enriched as they use the product to you know, see what they're going to get when they, when they finish actually building it out on the shop. Certainly if they can um, visualize what it's going to look like before they have to go to um, the shop floor make a prototype. If they can do that, which they're able to do better now than they could previously, then they're definitely cutting costs. They can, they can present the, their design to people that they may have previously had to actually go build and say this is what it's going to be. Now they can visualize it all in 3D and, and uh, certainly some of, the, some of the enhancements that we've taken advantage of and used I think recently um, again allow the users to do bigger things and they also uh, allow users to see the detail of that design in more realism. I do use ATI Fire Pro actually. I have uh, two development systems and I have ATI Fire Pros in both of them so I use it on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that SOLIDWORKS and ATI Fire Pro deliver an excellent solution for our users. Um, performance is absolutely there, um, reliability is there, so I think uh, together they, they, they make a great combination. I think the most important criteria to, for people to think about as they look to purchase ATI hardware is, uh, is memory buffer, how much memory the card has. Uh, we're trying to use more and more of that memory so that we can do things faster. And um, the more that's there, the more that's available, the um, you know, better chance that we're going to be taking advantage of it to give them a better experience. You know, today we, we, we do a fair bit with, with shader programming to enable um, you know, realistic looking uh, materials in the scene, you know, things made of metal and chrome looking you know, reflective and everything, um, more accurate shadows of, uh, you know, on the model itself and, and the environment. So um, we've enabled some of this stuff and as we've enabled it we've seen that there is some demand to do more of that sort of stuff in you know, a real time environment, be able to um, you know, do sort of real-time presentations of products in development and um, there's more that we can do there and more that we'd like to take advantage of in the future in terms of what what can be done with shader programming today. You know with shader programming there, there's sort of a you know more and more coming out all the time in terms of what users can what what, what can be done and um, we certainly want to keep looking at what can be done and looking at the needs of our users and giving them some of that some of that capability. ATI Fire Pro has met that need and 
we've uh, you know we're able to do all the things that we wanted to do, we set out to do, you know, in the in the past, and I hope we'll continue to do the things that we want to do in the future. Our users are expecting to to build bigger and bigger things, and 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 they expect to be able to do that without um, sacrificing any of the fidelity or performance that they they have today. So keeping up with that um, can be can be a bit of a challenge. AMD helping us help our users is basically understanding that the the line or, or the the bar for bigger, faster, more real is always on the rise. So we have to always meet that meet that challenge. So making things bigger, keeping them just as fast or faster, making them look more real in real time, all these things, you know, that's a moving bar um, for the for 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 our users, and we need to keep up with them. And I think that's where you know, AMD can help us meet that demand.